So welcome um, to the Windows Virtual Desktop and Citrix Workspace presentation. My name is Carissa Stringer. I work for Citrix. I do product marketing for our app and desktop virtualization products. And I'm very excited to have a whole panel here from Citrix and Microsoft. So I'll hand it over to each one to introduce themselves. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Peter Wicklevin. I'm a program manager in uh, the Windows Virtual Desktop Engineering team for Microsoft. Hi, I'm Randy Cook. I work with Peter on the Windows Virtual Desktop team, uh, recently from FS Logix. Came to Microsoft through acquisition. And I'm the shortest guy on the panel, so I'm Harsh Gupta. <laughs> I am the product manager for Citrix. You guys know me for uh, virtual apps and desktop for a while. Great. So let's go ahead and dive right in here. So we have three goals for you in today's presentation. First off is, what is Windows Virtual Desktop? And who better to explain that to us than the Microsoft team themselves? And then the next question very quickly becomes, what is the Citrix value add on top of um, Windows Virtual Desktop? So we'll, we'll dive into that in a little bit more detail. And then, of course, where do you go from there? What's next? How do I get started today? We'll give you some guidance as we go through some of those specifics. So we can't start a presentation on Citrix and Microsoft without talking about the Citrix and Microsoft relationship. I really, Brad Anderson said it on stage yesterday, and I couldn't agree more. It is really a unique partnership in the industry. 30 years strong, and of course, the fact that we have Microsoft joining us on stage today, as well as many Microsoft representation um, in the audience, I think it really is a testament to the strength of that partnership. However, every time we talk about the Microsoft partnership, we talk about it at a super high, broad level. And what I want to do today is actually go one click down and talk about it more specifically as it relates to Azure. So Microsoft has made a huge investment in Azure, right? You can see from this slide here, they have 40, 54 worldwide regions present in 140 countries. That's a huge investment on the Microsoft side. And where is Citrix? We're right there in lockstep with them. So starting back in 2016, Citrix made the commitment that we were invested in Azure. It was our preferred and strategic cloud. And from that point forward, we've continued to invest in it. With us, the uh, Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktop Service has a global presence in Azure. We've actually introduced new regions starting within Azure Gov. And from an integrated solutions perspective, you can see that it's our preferred identity option with Azure AD, as well as integration with our SD-WAN technology with the Azure Virtual WAN service. So again, it's just a, a key area of focus for um, Citrix is, is our integration with Azure. So let's talk about what does that mean to you? As a customer of both Citrix and Microsoft, why is that relevant? That's relevant because we've seen a huge uptick in the investment you've made in Citrix technology on Azure. So these aren't stats that you've probably seen in the rest of the presentations this week, but we have three times as many customers deploying the Citrix virtual apps and desktop service on Azure this year as we did just a year ago. Why is that important? That's important because customers are eager to host their workloads on Azure. So those that are using the service, you're typically going to find them deployed in a hybrid model. They're going to have some of their resources that are located on premises, and some are hosted in the public cloud. Of those resources hosted in a public cloud, 80% of them are running on Azure. And why, of course, are customers doing that? Why are customers leveraging Citrix solutions um, on Azure as well as on-premise? It's because of a handful of enhancements Citrix brings. First of all, the ability to manage those workloads, whether they are on-prem or the cloud. The ability to optimize the performance of those workloads in the infrastructure hosted in Azure. And of course, our biggest claim to fame, the high definition user experience that we're bringing when users access those virtual apps and desktops. So by a show of hands, I'm very interested. How many people have started leveraging, whether it's in a trial or a POC, the Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktop Service today? OK, great, great. So for many of you, there you can draw the comparison. A lot of people are using the traditional deployment. So you might be running your management plane on-premises. You may have your workloads on-premise. The appeal in going to the Virtual Apps and Desktop Service, so I'm great. You know, It's very exciting to see all the hands that were raised. 
Of course, you're going to get access to the latest, greatest features and enhancements from Citrix. We're going to be able to optimize that infrastructure. You're not going to need to do manual updates to all the infrastructure. You literally are able to focus on the key aspects of your apps and desktop that you care the most, which is typically usually user access, um, policies, control, all those things that are related to your, um, your corporate data. Some other key reasons to con consider the service. Optimizing your disaster recovery strategy is probably one of the number one reasons that we see customers invested in the virtual apps and desktop service. But today, here on stage, what I'm most excited to share with you is the newest benefit that we're bringing to the virtual apps and desktop service, and that is the integration that we have with Windows Virtual Desktop. So from here, we'll take it and hand it over to Peter to walk you through what Windows Virtual Desktop actually is. Thank Want you. This one? Yeah, this one's working, so let's go for it. So we announced Windows Virtual Desktop last year at Ignite, and ever since, we've seen a huge amount of interest. At this moment, we're in public preview, uh, already have thousands of tenants up and running, and the best thing is that the vast majority of companies out there, or larger organizations, they're already licensed for Windows Virtual Desktop. So what is Windows Virtual Desktop? Let's, let's talk about that. Um, first of all, Windows Virtual Desktop is a combination of net new technology and some new entitlements. So one of the four promises that we make is that it's the only multi-session Windows 10 experience. And in a few slides, I'll explain more what that means. Now, we also enable optimizations for Office 365 Pro Plus. And we're doing that in two ways. One is we acquired an organization called FS Logix, and that came with Randy. Um, and the other thing is that our office team is improving the product itself so it behaves better in a virtualized environment. So think about uh, OneDrive installer. We now have a machine-wide installer. The same goes for Teams. Uh, Outlook is making changes on how stuff is being synchronized. And all of this is specifically designed for virtualized environments. Another change we made not so long ago is the fact that if you have an RDS license, you can also use Windows Virtual Desktop. So it's also license friendly. And because it's based on Azure, you can deploy and scale in minutes. So just imagine that you have seasonal workers. When the season starts, you scale up. And whenever it's done, you scale down with just a few mouse clicks. Now, if we click down a little bit more, what are additional benefits of Windows Virtual Desktop? Well, as you can see on the slide, it's a solution for both VDI, but also RDSH. We have support for persistent, non-persistent, single session, multi-session. And as you can see on the second bullet, we also have support for full desktop or remote app. So we support everything. Another benefit you're getting, this is more of an entitlement, is Windows 7 with free extended security updates. So what does it mean? Well, as you know, hopefully, uh, in January 2020, so roughly, what is it, six, seven months from now, Windows 7 will reach end of support. And that means if you still have Windows 7 running, you got two options. You either, well, you got three options, now that I think about it. One is do nothing, it's always an option, not recommended. The second option is you purchase uh, extended security updates for your on-prem Windows 7 machines. You can purchase one, two, or three years. So by 2023, that's when Microsoft will stop creating security updates for Windows 7. The other option is if you upload that Windows 7 workload onto Azure as part of Windows Virtual Desktop, you'll get the three years of extended security updates free of charge. The only thing you'll be paying for is the compute and storage and network uh, that Azure will generate. And that's the only thing you will be charged for. We integrate with all of the other security aspects or the other capabilities of Microsoft 365. Think about Intune management or MDM management. Um, and we also leverage Azure AD identities, which means that once you connect into the service, you're remote into the service, we can now use things like multi-factor authentication or conditional access, just like a light switch. It's super easy to enable. So I mentioned this Windows 10 multi-session experience. So let's dive into this a little bit more on what it means. So on the left, you can see Windows Server 
And this is the world today, right? You can choose between Windows Server or Windows 10 Enterprise. So what are the pros and cons? So on the left side, you can see a Windows Server. The biggest benefit is that it allows multiple sessions. So you know what it means, right? You can have multiple people remote into this virtual machine or potentially a physical machine. It supports Win32 apps. It does not support modern apps like Edge, Cortana, and the store. Um, it's, the best fit is with Office Perpetual. Depending on which build you're running, Office Pro Plus might not even be supported. And it's super static. So once you deploy it, it remains static for about 10 years. On the other side of the spectrum, there's Windows 10 Enterprise, which only supports one session. So if you have a company of 1,000 employees, you'll be running 1,000 instances of Windows 10 Enterprise, which is more expensive. But it does come with some benefits. It supports modern apps, again, Edge, Cortana, the store, uh, Office 365 Pro Plus, and it's based on a different release cadence. It's what we call the semi-annual channel. And that means you get feature updates twice a year. There's a spring and a fall update. Another change that we made a couple of months ago is we declared additional support for the fall update. And that means you got 30 months if you deploy the fall update. And this is mostly towards larger organizations or enterprises because twice a year potentially was too quick. So if you pick the fall update, you could even skip one release and still remain in support. Now the new thing we've been working on is Windows 10 Enterprise multi-session, and it combines the best of two worlds. So it's, it feels and it looks and it smells like Windows 10 because guess what? It is Windows 10. The only big difference is that it allows multiple sessions. So now if you deploy one virtual machine with Windows 10 Enterprise multi-session, you can have multiple people remote into it. And one of the questions we get pretty often is, but what's the limit? How many folks, how many sessions do you support? And the answer is we have no limit. It depends on how much hardware resources you assign. That will be the bottleneck, but it's not the operating system itself. So you can see that it combines the best of two worlds. It supports Win32, so you have great or good uh, application compatibility. Modern apps, Office 365 Pro Plus. We even added a lot of enhancements for virtualized environments, including um, shared computer activation uh, and the other tweaks that I mentioned at the beginning, like uh, machine-wide installers and, and such. And we have the same thing, semi-annual channel, so twice a year, including 30 months, for the fall update. So I'm gonna hand over to Randy, and he's gonna talk a little bit about FS Logics and all the magic that it, uh, that it brings. All right. <clears throat> Thanks, Peter. Thank you all for coming today, appreciate it. I'm gonna take a minute and just cover at a high level what uh, the different products are that are available with it, with, that come from FS Logics. These all now live inside the WVD team. That's where we landed. Um, First of all, we want to talk about our profile container. So the profile container is just the ability to roam the user's profile. And we do this in kind of a unique way. Uh, we put it all into a, a VHD or a VHDX. And what happens is that file is stored on a file server somewhere. And as the user is logged on, that is quickly attached to the machine. The FS Logic technology makes it look like it's native part of the C drive. You can't really tell the difference. All the office stuff thinks it's all native C drive. As the user logs off, the volume is just detached, and all the changes that the user made are, are persisted on the file share. So this is just a really fast way in these types of environments to, to roam the profile. And the, the cool thing that, that this enables is that you can turn on all of the office caching that you've had to turn off previously. And this is really what makes the office experience work in a native fashion, and get, users just get a native experience. Now, sometimes there's reasons why you can't replace your profile solution, uh, lots of, of them. Um, and so for those situations, we have something that we call the office container. It does exactly the same thing, but it only does it for those portions of the user profile that have to do with office caching. All the rest of the stuff will just fall through to the regular profile and just be roamed by your regular profile roaming solution. So this is something that you can easily put into your environment and uh, 
without having to replace anything and then make your office stuff work really quickly. We do, however, recommend, if you can, to use the profile container because that's really going to get you uh, an easier migration to WVD later. You just can be able to copy these files up to the cloud and be ready to go. We have a, another couple of products that, uh, that are interesting as well. Uh, one is called App Masking, and this is just the ability to allow visibility of applications to applications that are installed in the base image. So there's no kind of provisioning or anything like that. Just, the, just if the applications are there, you can say this set of users gets, sees the application, this set doesn't. And so we see that as very complementary to app layering technologies. We don't see them com conflict. They actually are better together. So it's a great story. Um, and then our, our last product that we've got is Java Redirection. And this just simply allows you as an administrator to say when a user opens up this particular application or this particular URL, that needs to run with this particular version of Java. And so you can have a variety of versions of Java on the machine, and everything by default will run with the latest version. But if you have a, an older application that needs a particular version of Java, it's just a simple policy that you put in place to make that work. So since we've been acquired, um, it's been uh, about six months now or so, and we've been working on what the entitlement is going to be for this. And this, this will be announced shortly, um, but it will be very broad. So most likely, everybody here will be covered by entitlement, and you'll be able to use all of these products uh, for free. And there will be no limitation about where you use these. So you're not just going to be able to use these in WVD. We, totally understand the hybrid environment. We understand the importance of you being able to adopt these technologies as you move into the cloud. So they will be available to you uh, in those environments as well. So <laughs> that's a very good message to send. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, it's pretty exciting. Um, so we've done a lot of talking. We'll hand it back over to Peter for some demoing. All right, thanks, uh, thanks, Randy. So, uh, so here we're looking at not my local device, but this is Windows 10 multi-session. And there's a few ways to see if that's the case. The easiest is by just going to Task Manager. And if you go to the User tab, here we can see that we have a few or a bunch of users logged on. Most of them are disconnected, but they could also have an, an active session right now. So, and you know, like I mentioned before, it smells and feels like Windows 10 because it's actually what it is. FS Logix adds the capability to use Office just like it would on a physical device. And that's our vision, that's our future. We want to make sure that Office behaves just like it would on a physical endpoint. FS Logix helps, just like Randy mentioned, because of all of the caching, which is now stored on a VHD that's uh, stored outside of the VM and just is mounted right in time when you need it. And we can tell by just opening Outlook. And here I have all my data. Now, even if tomorrow I log on and I'm assigned another virtual machine that I've never seen before in a non-persistent environment, FS Logix mounts the VHD, which builds my or is using my, uh, my user profile. And whenever one of the Office products starts, all my data is just there. So it feels like this is the machine I was using yesterday. And because of that, we can also use um, my OST file to search in. Like, I can search for poker, and I find my friend who invited me over for an evening of poker. Just one example. Another thing which just automatically works is OneDrive. So if I go to OneDrive, you can see over here, I'll just zoom in a bit for the folks in the back. Oh, let's try again. So here you can see that I have uh, a few files, and some of them are uh, in the cloud, so stored also in Azure, by the way, and some of them are on my local, within my local profile. Now, the cool thing is that files, getting files across is relatively quick because my virtual machine is in Azure, my OneDrive for business data is also in Azure, so if I right-click, and I choose always keep on this device, and this is actually when the file will be hydrated to my environment or to my profile, it's almost instant 
because it's just almost like a local file copy. So that's one of the, the benefits as well. OneDrive is fully supported. The on-demand feature or on-demand files that we're showing now is also fully supported. So that's just a quick demo of Windows 10 uh, Enterprise uh, multi-session uh, with Office, with OneDrive. And the best thing as well is that for Windows 10 Enterprise multi-session, you don't need an RDS Cal. So if you're licensed for, uh, per, for Windows per user or something better, it means you're already entitled for it. So you don't need an RDS Cal like you would for Windows Server. So let's talk about the high-level architecture. If we look at these boxes here on the right, the three sections you see, let's start at the bottom right. So you can see provided by Microsoft, the compute, storage, and networking, that's just basic Azure functionality. This has been around whenever Azure was born. So Microsoft ex abstracts all of the hardware layer. That's something you don't have to worry about. The only thing that you bring is your subscription. So you bring an Azure subscription, and within it, you can deploy specific operating systems. So we have support for Windows 7, including the, the three years of free extended security updates. Uh, we have support for Windows 10 Enterprise. Um, then, of course, Windows 10 Enterprise multi-session, what we just showed. And if you have Citrix, so Citrix adds a lot of value on top of Windows Virtual Desktop. And one is support for Windows Server 2008 R2 and up. If you look at Windows Virtual Desktop, let's say natively without Citrix, we don't have support for Server 2008 it starts with 2012 R2 and up. So that's just one example, and uh, Harsh will talk about more of the examples later on. Now, on top of that, you have additional uh, features or functionality and services that are provided by Citrix. And Harsh, yeah. since you are, you know, this is your bread and butter, so hopefully you can take, take it over from me. I think you're doing a really great job promoting Citrix. <laughs> you should probably continue. No, but seriously, thank you. Um, yeah, thanks, Peter. So definitely, right, anything that we've done in the past, all the value that virtual apps and desktop services have been providing in the past, they continue to layer on. The one thing I definitely wanted to call out in the slide, as Peter was referring to, is with WVD, great benefits coming out. The customers bring their own compute. After that, they have all their entitlements, especially the ones around Windows 10 multi-session, Windows 7 ESU, and then through Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktop Service, you can be managing all the workloads. And the best part is if you're already a Virtual Apps and Desktop Service customer, it was great to see almost 40 or 50% customers. This is, you're just gonna add your WVD subscription to the mix and you're managing that new experience. If you're a new customer, you wanna try, this is a great way to start your cloud journey further along with Virtual Apps and Desktop Service, Provisioning at scale is a major benefit, and thereby you can be managing across multiple different geos. So we all understand that. And now that Peter put the pressure off a demo, I'm gonna try. So let's see what the public preview looks like. So that's step one. You have a Citrix Cloud account, you log in. You go into the virtual apps and desktop service, just like how you configured any other machine catalog in the past, Windows 10 multi-session would become a new machine catalog. And the only thing to change that's coming very shortly is, till today we had server, <coughs> server OS and desktop OS, that's gonna change names to multi-session OS and single session OS, so it's more clear to our end customers. So once I've done that, I'm gonna log into my workspace app. Let's say this is user one logging in. There's this Windows 10 multi-session desktop, which Peter was showing earlier. Let's make sure we have the same desktop. And there you go, right? It is the enterprise WVD, enterprise virtual desktop. Second user logging in. That's also Windows 10 multi-desktop. And then finally, we wanna make sure we can monitor all of this experience. We go into director and really showcase the number of machines that are being used. Is that one single machine that we had configured? But from a user standpoint, or from the session standpoint, we actually have two sessions coming out of the same, thing, same desktop. 
So it's a really great benefit for customers who wanted the desktop experience but have all the cloud benefits as cost savings and agility and so on. And um, just a little spiel. Um, if you have access, if you have not tried virtual apps and desktop service, sign up for a trial. And then learn more about this relationship in further detail uh, at more.citrix.com slash WVD. I'll pause that for a second so that you can copy the link. Good? <laughs> Five, four, three. Okay. Promotion done. <laughs> Okay, so uh, now really, like, <clears throat> it's been a 30-year-old relationship. Brad said it, Cursor reiterated it. It is very similar to the same concept. It is typically that RDS value add, and this is identical to it. We're doing the same thing. So for the most part, think of this relation to only be getting stronger right, at the very core. So that's why you have this WVD and all the value add points on top of it. But when you get to the specifics of it. There are a certain items because it's the cloud world now. With virtual apps and desktop service and the WVD entitlement, you have faster time to value, right? One of the key cloud benefits, you have better image management, right? We support MCS from day one and then auto scaling. I wanna talk about that for a second because uh, it's a brand new feature that we've introduced where we've overhauled power management for your hybrid workloads. So now you can not just do RDS but also VDI. I should reiterate single session and multi session workloads, right? And then it can be schedule based, power based, uh, and load based, and you'll have buffer capacity on top of that. And we'll further enhance that so that you can go ahead and take higher levels of benefits of your hybrid deployments and your cloud investments. Further along, user experience, HDX, I think we've already <clears throat> set the stage for this one for a while. Workspace intelligence. I would say it's a great way to start your journey to, uh, to the intelligent workspace that um, David Henschel and PJ mentioned on the keynote. And then finally, a broad line support. Monitoring, uh, we have granular policy control. I guess most of you must be aware of that. Uh, director, great tool, right, for your operational analytics. And then our analytics platform itself. We've, we've released security. We are releasing operations later in this year. So further, you would just keep getting those values. And finally, all these office optimizations, Steam, Skype for Business, OneDrive, and, and just a call out for SD WAN service, where uh, what you're really doing is, with the, because of the relationship, we have those API tie-ins where no matter what Azure location you are, you do these APIs, you'll go to the closest pop of Office 365 for great performance. With that said, um, for all of us admins in the room, just like us, this is what we have to deliver. We have to deliver a great user experience with high security and choice. So to be able to do that, this is what you require. So when Citrix and Microsoft come together, you get all these different pieces all tied in. So it's an eye chart. If you can read them in like the next three seconds, great, but this is all the value add. Um, so at Citrix, we have multiple offerings or multiple services. You must have heard of um, Citrix Managed Desktop that we announced recently. Kirti has done a session on this that would support uh, WVD entitlements or benefits further along for a more flexible or hybrid use case, virtual apps and desktop service. And then how quickly you move, want to move on to the intelligent workspace and the, all the latest and greatest features, you have the most comprehensive offering from Citrix. And then uh, from an entitlement standpoint, um, at the base, managed desktop service is a SKU by itself, you get it with that. Then you have the virtual app service because it, is, it supports multi-session. Further along, virtual apps and desktop service, multi-session, single session, so Windows 7 ESU comes into the mix. And finally, Workspace Premium Plus. So all these additions, if you have them, you do have access to WVD. If you do, I mean, you can, you can have WVD subscription supported. If not, you can extend to it. So with that, I'll hand it back to Carissa to wrap up. Sorry. It's tight through there. Okay, just to summarize where we are at. So it's a lot of information to process. So when we kind of went through, obviously having four people on the stage and going through it in different angles can be challenging. So we went through and said, what are the top highlights that we want to take away based on each um, individual's presentation? So Peter, obviously we're thrilled to have program management from Microsoft on stage. 
the key areas of focus from Peter's section was really highlighting that Windows Virtual Desktop is in public preview today. That means if you are a Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktop Service customer and you're interested in the new multi-session capabilities of Windows 10, you can actually go and access that template today. It's available in Azure. From my side, I want to make sure it is very clear, as Hirsch already demonstrated in the video, Citrix is committed to day one support for Windows Virtual Desktop, and we're committed to that not just for the Virtual Apps and Desktop service, but across the entire workspace offering, as well as the new Citrix Managed Desktops as a Service platform. The other part is, and I, I really love this analogy, I've been at Citrix for many, many years, and when I think of Windows Virtual Desktop, hopefully the Microsoft folks think about it the same way, I think of it as the future and evolution of remote desktop services. So in many ways, you can think of Citrix bringing the value add we've done on remote desktop services. We're very excited to go into this new era hand in hand with Microsoft, and we're bringing that, uh, that ability to extend and enhance RDS going forward. From Randy's presentation, so thanks to the gentleman who applauded in the corner, I agree. I think it's excellent to hear that Microsoft is committed to optimizing the performance of Office in a virtualized environment. I think it is wonderful news for all of us. It's something that we're all going to benefit from. And obviously, Randy kind of highlighting that FSLogic's technology in the near future will be eligible for folks. Um, you can go and download that from the, the FSLogic site today. And from Harsh's, if there's one key takeaway, for those of you that raised your hands, the integration between the benefits of Windows Virtual Desktop and Citrix, it is something that is relevant to our cloud services. So you must be leveraging, whether it is the Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktop Service, the Citrix Managed Desktops, it has to be one of our cloud services offerings to be able to take advantage of the new Windows Virtual Desktop benefits, obviously because that solution has a very cloud-centric focus. And the next part is, if you are interested, you can get started with a public preview today. Harsh gave you the URL. Um, you can actually go to that page on citrix.com, so more.citrix.com slash WVD. But this is actually what the preview guide it looks like. Um, I want to give a big thank you to Mayank Singh and Loe, who were able to pull together this uh, reviewer's guide. It's a very detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how you can integrate Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktop Service with um, Windows Virtual Desktop. So I am going to... Wrap it up here, so next stop. Before you leave, if you want to see all this in action, you want to ask um, for more detailed questions. So the Citrix booth is showing the live demos of what um, Harsh and Peter showed here. The Microsoft booth is also showing both of those pieces. So by all means, please make sure you go down and ask more questions about your booth. Um, Clark's here. He loves licensing questions about Microsoft, so he'll be in the booth. You can ask him. Um, of course, we're going to ask you to, to fill out the survey. We're being recorded, so it'll be available on demand um, on the TV, and you can download this presentation. We'll be available starting next week. Um, and then, of course, we always like your feedback, so we want to make sure we make Synergy better for you this year and next. So if you would take a moment and give your um, feedback on the session, we'd appreciate that as well. So I will go ahead and pause there and open it up for any questions. That's fair. Come on. No questions. We did such a good job. Oh, nope. come of on. Of course not. <laughs> This probably goes to Randy, I guess. So we're all going to get FS Logics entitlements because we have RDS CALs and VDA entitlements, et cetera, et cetera. Do you know when that's going to appear on our entitlement pages for download? Uh, <clears throat> I can say soon. <laughs> so could be very. It, it'll be it'll be very shortly. In the meantime, we're just, we've got it wide open. So if anybody wants to get an eval of this stuff and look at it right now, you, we're we're just handing those out. So. You just be able to swap the eval to a production license? Yeah, well, the next release will have no key in it, so you will have no license required. Gotcha. So just a simple install, upgrade, you'll be good to go. Gotcha. Thanks. Yep. One thing I wanted to mention, too, is if you're interested in FS Logics or WVD news, you might just follow me on Twitter, Randy Coder. Um, I, I, I mention everything there, and that's close to where you'll see it first. So. Go ahead. Yeah, this is for Randy also. Um, OneDrive. 
uh, is there going to be any options that we can actually limit how much we can download or the users can actually download to, to a session? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we will be working on that with the OneDrive team. There's, there's nothing that FS Logics is doing to limit the size of the cache currently. Uh, but we do get that question a lot, and it needs to be addressed. Um, so we're working with the OneDrive team to see if they want to do it or if we want to do it. So it'll, it'll get done. He's coming. He's coming. Citrix bought unit tests. They're trying to all do Apple Airing. Microsoft bought FS Logic. Are they going to work together? Absolutely. Yes. So uh, pre-acquisition, long time ago, we made sure that those work together. And, and uh, they continue. We have customers that are using those in conjunction. We recommend using them in conjunction. They are very complementary. Uh, the FS Logic stuff is really good at doing uh, just small things like plugins and add-ins and things like that. Um, but also just stuff that you've got in your base image that you need to control visibility for. The rest of it should all be done with app layering. So we could literally just use the FS Logic just for the Office problem. Yeah. And use everything else for everything else. App yeah, layering. Office add-ins, IE plugins, all that kind of stuff that works really well for that kind of stuff. Cool. Thanks. I think that's it. So thank you all so much for your time today. We appreciate it.